it's been 661 days since my last video upload, so... Hello friends, today we're going to be talking about straight pride. Well, for the same reason that John Hugo, Matt Sahady, and Chris Bartley have been talking about it. They are the leadership and seemingly the only members of a group called Super Happy Fun America, which was seemingly created solely for the purpose of advancing straight pride. These three recently made headlines when they stated their intent to create a straight pride parade in Boston. To be fair, the event itself didn't make as many headlines as the general public's myriad reactions to it, and maybe, just maybe, this is part of the problem. Now, if you look at the website for Super Happy Fun America, it becomes pretty clear that this is some kind of joke. Joke just there was in quotation marks, but you can't see quotation marks when I speak. I put joke in quotation marks because, much like everyone's favorite ogre, there are layers to this site. On the surface, this website is a joke. There are all sorts of references to meme culture in a clear attempt to gaslight leftists. Cloaking this cause, again, quotation marks, in social justice language and memes gives anyone who espouses these beliefs plausible deniability when confronted. If I were to sincerely critique the ideas being displayed here, anyone defending them could easily sidestep the actual issues with the typical crypto-fascist gaslighting response. LOL, you SJWs really are going crazy, looking for anything to cling to so you can cry to your mommies. Fucking snowflakes. So there's really no point in critiquing the downright medieval ideas on display here. When we consider that this is the website this group has chosen to build, we have to consider that the concept of a half-joke comes into play for the parade, too. In other words, the way that all of this is presented allows the creators enough wiggle room that they could, if they wanted, avoid having to explain why straight pride is necessary and just call it a joke. For the record, though, Hugo, Sahady, and Bartley don't seem to consider it a joke at this point, at least not openly. They've taken reporters' questions seriously and have done their best to express their views. Bartley, who is gay, had this to say when asked for comment by Queer Tie. Queer Tea? Queer Tie. Is it Queer Tea or Queer Tie? I realized just now that I haven't said that out loud ever. My motivation to participate in this year's straight pride is to make the far left realize how insane they have become and how overarching they are. Many LGBT people have reached out to me and have said that gay pride is not the way it used to be. It used to be about fighting against the man, and now it's a drink and work with man, essentially being a sheep. Gay pride used to be about free speech, and now they are not. So this is why straight pride has become a reality, to showcase how extreme the left has become. This quote gives us some insight into the real reason this parade is being put together. It isn't really a genuine effort to protect what Super Happy Fun America calls an oppressed majority, whatever that means, and, again, quotation marks, but is instead a direct reaction to Spectrum Pride as a personification of what Bartley calls the far left. Absolutely. There's a lot that can be said about the erasure and exclusion of all kinds of people who don't fit the standard norm of skinny, white, male, and cis. The commercialization and commodification of Pride is enough cause for concern. The debate around including police in Spectrum Pride came to a head this year when police officers in Detroit actively protected KKK and other far-right extremists, groups that actively condone the dehumanization of Spectrum communities, at Detroit Pride, all while wearing rainbow badges. There's a lot to unpack in how Pride has evolved in the 50 years since the Stonewall riots, and... There is even a lot of controversy in Stonewall itself being labeled as the beginning of gay liberation. In his comments, though, Bartley doesn't address these concerns at all. If you listen carefully to what he does say, you can pull back the veil and scratch the surface of why this parade is happening. Gay pride is not the way it used to be. Essentially being a sheep. 
Gay pride used to be about free speech, and now they are not. Bartley is a very public and unapologetic Trump supporter. His colleagues Hugo and Sahedi also lean right. Very far right. I wouldn't be the first to point out this group's disturbing ties to the alt-right, and I don't think they would even really deny that claim. After all, alt-right sassy gay friend Milo Yiannopoulos has been named the event's Grand Marshal. As with a lot of other alt-right campaigns and activity, this straight pride parade is part of what American Johnson over at Non-Compete has dubbed the Pewdie Pipeline. If you haven't watched his video, it's a great primer into the way that modern alt-right internet recruiting works. The alt-right relies heavily on the internet and memes to recruit disillusioned young white men, and others, into their political movement. They hide dangerous and harmful ideas behind fun and harmless-looking memes in order to test the waters with potential recruits. As I mentioned earlier, the meme cover allows for plausible deniability. But this isn't just for the people who are making the memes. It's also for the people who consume them. When a susceptible person begins to dip their toes in the alt-right swamp, they can defend these harmful ideas as just jokes, still in quotation marks, not only to others, but to themselves. I'm not really a racist. I'm just enjoying myself. It's the leftos who are just being killjoys. Why can't I just have fun? There's a running theme here. The far right presents itself as a fun and laid-back alternative to the extreme of identity politics and PC culture. To the angsty teen of the disillusioned white man, the alt-right presents themselves as the cool uncle who lets them sneak a cigarette and sip of beer behind the back of their too strict parents. This is basically how the PewDiePie pipeline works, and even a cursory glance at the materials presented on the Super Happy Fun America website brands it as a clear part of that alt-right recruitment network. Unfortunately, as I hinted at the beginning of the video, I think part of the blame for the effectiveness of these recruiting techniques lies with us in the left. Granted, a lot of the labeling of killjoy is exaggerated, but I think we often do go too far in the ways in which we as a group react to things. I'm not going to lie. I enjoyed a lot of the reactions that I saw to the straight pride parade. Memes like the ones I'm showing you now make me laugh and make me feel just a little safer when they are shared and enjoyed by my friends. Generally speaking, the tide of public opinion is turning in favor of spectrum communities. But there's an opposing undercurrent that's created by this tide. Part of me believes, and worries, that Super Happy Fun America is just putting on a show of trying to organize this event so that they can show their supporters and potential recruits just how terrible we are on the left. Our negative comments become fodder for the propaganda machine and the PewDiePie pipeline in general. I worry that we're playing directly into the hands of these people acting in bad faith. Honestly, there's no singular answer to that question. I think a major part of the problem with the left today has to do with the fact that we focus on physical versus metaphysical needs. Angie Speaks is another great YouTuber, and her video on capitalism and spirituality explains this problem really well. One of the big reasons that the left ends up leaving people behind is that we forget people are more than just creatures who need food and shelter. We need beauty, leisure, entertainment. The reason the PewDiePie pipeline is so effective is that it's built on that basis. It's Dionysian, hedonistic, sensual. People don't watch PewDiePie with the intention of becoming an extremist. They watch him because he's funny. I think that we on the left could stand to do a better job of offering this kind of experience to people. Don't get me wrong. It's important to call out harmful and dangerous ideas even when they appear in jest. The problem comes when we spend all of our time and energy on the negative and don't offer positive alternatives to people. Another problem is the fact, and I know this is going to make a lot of people upset, that we as the left have a tendency to ignore the fact that even white cis straight guys have feelings and needs. But Roman, aren't these needs being met entirely by patriarchal institutions? Why should we make room in activist spaces for people who already have the entire world? <sighs> I'm not saying that we have to make room for them in our spaces. What I am saying is that we need to be realistic. If we expect someone to support our cause, we can't frame it entirely around them as the enemy and them as the people who are going to ultimately lose or suffer by our winning. This isn't something we do on purpose. Oppression and oppressive systems are inherently violent. Revolution, therefore, is inherently violent. This means that the language of the oppressed will be inherently violent in the same way that all politics is violent. What I'm saying is that maybe we can cool it just a little bit in certain specific circumstances, and that 
yeah, we're going to have to hold some hands and reassure people that they don't have to be scared of progress. That being said, I don't believe that it is a woman's job to justify her desire for equality to a man who resists feminism. Rather, I think it is the job of people like me who can bridge that gap. I don't think it's the job of people of color to explain that Black Lives Matter doesn't mean to the exclusion of white lives. Rather, I think it's the job of people like me, a white supporter of BLM, who can bridge the gap. It is not the job of the oppressed group to be nice and considerate when demanding to be treated as human beings. Rather, we, as a larger political movement, need to consider optics and need to be better about balancing positive messaging with negative. Honestly, I personally feel that the less negative attention we give this group, the better. I don't think the alt-right needs any of us to criticize their ideas in order for them to be opposed. What we need to do is expose crypto-fascism for what it is. I don't think we need to stop Boston from giving these people a permit. They've made it clear that they consider this discrimination, meaning any action against it on our part will be used as fuel for recruitment. Instead, I'm very much of the opinion that they should be allowed enough rope to hang themselves with. Even exposing this to the crypto-fascist event that it is probably wouldn't have been necessary as the whole thing is likely going to turn into a fascist parade on its own. Most rational straight people, when confronted with the idea of marching alongside fascists, will probably not want to join that parade. Stripped of its disguise of an oppressed majority, they would have much less of a leg to stand on in terms of that nonsense when it's clear that the opposition to them and their parade from anti-fascists is centered on the fact that they are fascists. We don't need to oppose straight pride. As many people have pointed out, straight pride isn't a thing. It's not necessary. Straight people know this in the same way that white people know what white pride really means. Framing our arguments and objections around straightness only gives them what they want, martyrdom. Let them have their straight pride parade. If it really isn't crypto-fascist bullshit, then great. Let straight people have their party. In the much more likely event that it turns into another Unite the Right, we can stand against the fascists on a level playing field, leaving them without the ability to obfuscate their real intentions. What do you think? Do you agree that leaving them to their own devices is the best course of action? If not, what else do you think we should be doing instead? Let me know in the comments below, and I'm looking forward to sharing some ideas. I know it's been a while, but if you need advice, please hit me up on any of the social media you see listed below. I just started my internship for grad school, so I don't have a set upload schedule yet, but there is an advice video coming soon. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!